basically not because of me, but because of my children and because of the spirit. And by God's grace, we are going to be enjoying that. I know that God has a plan for somebody here. And he's going to turn your situation around. Amen. Amen. I don't want to mind you. Amen. I can mind you to pray. But I don't want to mind you. I want you to pray. Prayer can make the day Prayer can is the padlock of the day and is the key of the night. Seven days without prayer makes one weak. W E A K. Prayer is the thing that scatters the calendar of the world. So instead of us to keep having 365 days, we started having some years 365 days. When you pray, you clean the atmosphere. Prayer moves the hand that moves the you. I want to pray this. You see, when I was checking the scripture yeah, 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 and I was trying to bring yeah, it out, yeah. the difference between the word prayer and pray, I discovered that the word pray appears more number of times than the word prayer. What is that is saying is that pray is a verb, prayer is a noun. That is, God is saying that talk less about prayer, do the prayer. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray. I want you to prepare your heart. There are some things that will never happen if you don't pray. And you coming here this evening is not an accident. God has designed that you be here this evening, but it's not left to you to take advantage of all that God has for you. And so I want you to pray, people of God, because things are going to change. Amen. Your story will change. Yeah. Oh, you didn't get me. I said your story will change. Yeah. Okay, your story must change. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I don't know the level of the financial captivity you have operated in. I'm sorry to say this for those that are not from Africa. If you are from Africa and you are from Nigeria and you know Ajota Road, I have sold Ghana there. And I have one million dollars in my account at age 28. Amen. Amen. There is a God that can turn everything around. You know, many a times when I when I when I go out and see pastors talk about giving is the only way God can bless you, I say that is a half truth and that is a lie. Because the scripture does not say that. The scripture shows some deep revelations. And most times when I, when I go to church, do seminar, do training, and I show the old scripture, it's usually like, can you come back again? And we are there for hours and days. Because it has to involve some bit of teaching and some bit of, uh, of preaching. Now let me pick the common verse. And then we begin to go into what God has for us this evening. Malachi chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, bring you all the tithes into the store. And there will be meeting in my house and put me down here with here the Lord of hosts. And see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now, when God says you should give, he expects you to have a room. And so the only thing that we have as an epidemic problem is that many people just focus on you that you should give and give and give and they don't talk about the room. Meanwhile, the room is most important. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 talks about honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. So shall your burn. That means you must have a burn. Your burn, your burn, your burn. Your barn be filled with plenty, and your presses burst out with new one. Mm-hmm. So that means you have a barn, and then you have presses. And then, you see, when you talk about a press, a press is a place where something, where wine is produced. That's the one the Bible was talking about there. Now, where wine is produced, 
when you are you have to produce a wine, it can take 20 years to produce one wine. Amen. Amen. So what God is saying is that see, you should be able to have something that keeps bringing money for you constantly, even when you are not working. Now that brings me to say that there is what we call wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says, I am the Lord your God that giveth you power to get wealth. And you remember that prayer produces power. Amen. Amen. Is somebody with me? Amen. Now, there is a power that can be produced in the place of prayer. And you see, what some pastors talk about the fact that um, you don't need to pray about money. I just wonder. Where they, where, whether they have Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 in their Bible. He said in everything with prayers and supplication. It's not my daddy that put it there. It's the Holy Spirit that inspired it. Amen? Amen. So what we are talking about is that when the Bible talks about wealth, wealth is a situation whereby you have the best of marriage, the best of health, the best of finance, the best of everything. That is what wealth means. And maybe I should, I should, I should, I should show us some, some bit of this stuff from the Bible. Now, before we start doing that, I need to quickly say that the word wealth was gotten from an Indo-European world in the 1900s. And okay, maybe I should, I should before I go to Indo-European world. Now, if you have heard about trade by butter, can I see your answer, please? God bless you. When our fathers does not have money, they were wealthy. Amen? So, wealth existed before what? Before money. Now, you will discover that in those days, somebody that is wealthy, we have big farms, we have servants, we have sheep, we have cattle, and all of that. And whenever he has to get anything, maybe it's a wife, or maybe it's another house, or maybe he wants to get a donkey, then, he will take some part of the sheep and land and farm produce and take it to them and then they will do trade by battle. Now, what am I trying to say? Wealth is a situation where everything is provided, where everything is granted. And what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, which is going to be our text, is that I am the Lord your God that gives you power to get it all. Amen. Amen. Now, you see, when, whenever the Bible talks about wealth, it's talking about something beyond money. You know, many a times, you see, somebody can be rich and he will not be wealthy. But somebody cannot be wealthy and not be rich. Amen. Amen. Because the truth is, okay, maybe we should just go to Luke chapter 12. Let's open and see Luke chapter 12. If we see Luke chapter 12, maybe some of these things will become a bit clearer to us. Amen. Let me read verse 16 for you. And he spent a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth what? Plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruit? And he said, and he, remember the word room. There's no, there's no time today. I will have explained to us room, field, barn, presses. If you, if you go to the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible talks about the blessing of the basket, the blessing of the warehouse, the blessing of the store. Now, when you, different parts of the Bible talks about the field. Now, if you go to that Malachi chapter 3, verse 9 to 11, there's a place there that talks about the fruit of your ground. I will rebuke the defora for your sake. And it will not destroy the fruit of your ground. That means your ground. You have a ground. Now, whenever the Bible talks about all of these things, it talks about different levels at which money is flowing in for you. Now, money has a psychological effect. When you don't have money at times, it will be as if you don't have anything on it. You, you will just feel some form of emptiness. Amen. Amen. Now, that's the psychological effect that money used to have. Now, I have said that to say this. 
that God expects money to flow in for you from different sources. The Bible speaks typically about it in the book of Genesis, about the four rivers that flow in. Now, God expects money to come in for you from the west, from the east, from the north, from the south. He expects you to be able to believe in that is the source of your income, the source of your wealth, the source of your money. But do you know what happens? The devil tries to do the reverse. He makes you to believe that the bank is the source of your income. So when you don't have money, you look to credit. So you don't need to pray. That reminds me when sometimes ago when we were on campus, when the university and we had no food, and I went to pray with my friend. I we went to the mountain to pray. And after the prayer, we were coming down. That Lord, we don't have anything, and the exam is about to start. And when we got back home, he said he wanted to go and borrow money from our land. I said, I know that the God I've prayed to will provide for me. He said, I know God will touch her heart to borrow me money. <laughs> And do you know what? She went there and was borrowed some money. And somebody somewhere just came all the way from a very far city. The person that will not come on a normal day two days after brought more than abundant for me. You see, there is something that all the system of men does. They make you not to trust God. Because when you have financial need and then you have access to credit card, you don't want to pray. Mm. You don't want to have faith in God. Mm. You just go to Bank of America. Mm. Uh, okay, activate the credit card. Thank you. <laughs> There's no need to seek the face of God. Amen. Amen. And you see, one of the things that God wants us to do is to trust Him as our source. Because He's a multi-breasted one. He works from every angle. So it can make things to start working for you from back, front, center, middle, right, left. And that is the way he wants money to come in for you. For you to have good health. Not that we have money and then when money comes in, you will not be spending the money on health. No. He wants you to have good health. He wants you to have enough of money. He wants you to have a good marriage. You know one of the things that make people to lose wealth on time is divorce. Bad marriage. And number one cause of financial problem, I mean, number one cause of divorce in America is money problems. And God wants you to have wealth, all around wealth. But there are many threats to this thing. There are many threats. And those are the things we've come to deal with today. But let me quickly establish that God's plan for you is to have wealth and that the fact that God has the power to give you wealth, and the fact that wealth is different from riches. Let's, let's, let's quickly read Luke chapter 12, from verse 16. The ground of a certain rich man brought plentiful, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? I have no room where to bestow my fruit. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. There I will bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Thou hast much laid up years, take it, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Thou fool, thy soul shall be required of thee. And then who shall these things be? Now, the Bible talks about the fact that that man was able to build wealth for himself, but he was not rich towards God. So when you are rich towards God, you are rich in health, you are rich financially, you are rich all around wise, that's what we call wealth. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, let's look at it. I am the Lord your God. That does what? Okay, I, 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 want, us to, I want us to read it. You know, there are some times you, you thought he's there. But there are sometimes you actually see, it. yeah, it's true. So I've been looking at it all this while. I never knew. 8 verse 18. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that gives the power to get well. Amen. 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 
So that is God's plan for you. How many of you want what God has for you today? Amen. Amen. By the grace of God, I have, I have, I have countless testimony when it comes to this area. And I know that a change is going to happen in somebody's life. Yeah. While we are standing here and pastor was leading prayer, the Spirit of God made me to understand that there are some people here that they used to see themselves count um, calories in their dream. All these small coins. All this small money. And then some people used to walk naked. Those are signs of poverty. Your story will change. Yeah. Oh, there is no fire there. I say your story will change. Yeah. Uh, you are doing it like uh, you are not doing it like Jacob. You know what happened to Jacob? He needed a change. His arm got broken. He doesn't mind. The Bible says, and there resume a man with him till the daybreak. I'm sure that if it was Jabez, when he needed the change, that the prayer was said to him, he would say amen like this. I said, a permanent change will come upon your life. Yeah. I said, the power to get wet will locate your life. Yeah. Hey, we have come to meet the God that can do all things. We have come to meet the God that says silver is mine. Gold is mine. Why do you want to die with credit? Why do you want credit to kill you? Some people die because of hypertension of money. Some people don't have rest. They work 9 to 5 and fight 24 hours. There was somebody, I was listening to a story, they found him dead on the floor of UK. And when they searched his body, they made 10,000 pounds. And several IDs that he was using to enter different job. He was even going to another job. He doesn't sleep. He died there. Amen. Amen. There is a God that can make you to do little and enjoy much. Amen. And that is the God we have come to meet today. Amen. I want you to stand to your feet. Leka busa kashan talia, mande koso talia, barebo si tali de basa talia. You will help me look for a serious neighbor. Help me look for a serious neighbor. I want you to to to, to ask your neighbor. I mean, go to somebody you have not greeted today. Front, go to the back. Back, go to the front. Left to the right, right to the left. Just spot somebody that is serious. Ask the person, will you pray for me? Pray for me? Amen. I remember I was in a crusade, and then they said we should pray. And then I was holding that brother, sir. And when I was holding that brother, and then they said pray, the brother was doing like this, Father, Lord, Father, Father. I said, Jesus. I opened my eyes, I left the brother, I heard another person. And when we finished, I went back, I said, bro, sorry that I left you, you are not praying, but I'm not still coming back home, sorry. Amen. So I want you to pray. If that person is not praying, leave the body, hold the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You are going to pray. Every foundation of financial struggle in your life. Every foundation of financial struggle in your life. See, I, I want you to know something. Um, by the grace of God, all to the glory of God, I don't use... As at the time I left Nigeria, I don't use where they use car again. No matter what you buy, I buy it brand new. I put up the line on. I do. I mean, that's what I do for all my vehicles. The vehicles I give out, that's the same. Because after using it for three, I will just give it out. Amen. Amen. You see, I don't need to prove to you. I don't need to. I will just wear my normal. I have my wife. I'm just simple. That is just me. I have been in a situation whereby people are coming to our office to get some job and they met me around the staircase and they said, please, can you lead me to so so complex? I said, eh, please, who do you want to see there? I said, I said you should lead me to... I said, sorry, please go there. <laughs> and uh, the person was going there, I just followed the person. He entered the place and I moved to the table. I told the secretary, give me the letter on the table. And then when he realized that I was the boss, he was begging me for about two weeks. Because they needed me to sign a document. Amen. Amen. I don't need to prove anything to you. I have been doing that long ago. Because it's not about proving to somebody. 
Amen. Amen. So I want you to pray. God can change your story. Amen. You're going to pray for that person. Every foundation of financial struggle in your life. Every I command them to be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, Kataya, 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 Kataya,
que te puso. prophet, your situation will change. Jabez had been praying, but the day you pray like a madman, the situation changed. Oh, you didn't know what happened after work. Go and read that book very well. The Bible says they begin to name city after Jabez. You know what happened to Jacob? That night, he did another naming ceremony. There was a naming ceremony. The only thing was that they didn't cook rice and fab dream, but there was a name in ceremony. His name changed from Jacob to Israel. Amen. Amen. You know, when your story changed, you know what happened? Your name also changed. The people that have been calling you brought Timothy before, they will say, ah, Mr. Timothy, Chief Timothy, Elder Timothy. I mean, they will not know that your name has to change. Amen. I said your name will change. Your story will change in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray for that person you are holding. Lika so broche de Kasatalia, Mandelia Gadesu Talia. The Holy Ghost wants us to go back to the issue of that dream. You are going to pray for that person you are holding. Every negative dream in your life, and every source of negative dream in your life. Command them to cast fire. You can do it better. I command them to cast fire. In the name of Jesus. Labor push. Cast fire. In the name of Jesus. Lay so Kelia Mahandush Keleba Hatulia. 
Leka satalia. Matelebo satalia. Everyone under that evil covenant, I command it. Back in the name of Jesus! Jesus, 
He has everything under his control. Yeah. Do you know what the psalmist says about him? He said the thousand e the, 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 the thousand cattle on the ears. They, everything belongs to him. Yeah. So there is a new realm that you have not you see the moment I broke into that new nobody has done masters before. I finished my first degree, I did master, I did the one about they paid for my international degrees. Somebody just called me that, oh, because I used to have a radio show. One time like that, I was just sitting quietly. And then one money came in. And I said, Lord, this money has not come in like this before. What do you want me to do with it? He said, radio. I said, what will I be saying there? He said, all the things you have been saying about. I went to the radio. One show, I made $100,000. How many shows? One show. I'm not talking about two shows. One. Amen. Amen. God can turn your financial situation around. Amen. It can make you to be a base setter in your family. Amen. Nobody has made $100,000 cash before. Mm-hmm. Your own can be the beginning of the story. Amen. Oh, you're going to pray. Amen. I break into financial realm. about Jesus was in the ship with the disciples. Mm-hmm. And the wind was just blowing mm-hmm. any I wants to blow. Mm-hmm. And when they woke him up, he spoke the language of the wind. Mm-hmm. You may not understand the language of the wind, but there is somebody that is inside you. Mm-hmm. And you understand that language of the wind. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I don't know how the tempest is blowing the songwriter says, Master, the tempest is ready. The billows, they are over very hard. Now, when it comes to a point when you don't understand what to say, there is somebody inside you. The Bible describes him as somebody that is greater than the one that is in the world. He understands the language of the wind. In another time, God said, The head, bear me witness between me and the children of Israel these days. 
So the head has yet to hear. The wind has yet to hear. Money has yet to hear. You will speak to money. Money. From the east. From the west. From the north. From the south. Begin to locate me. In the name of Jesus. They are usually afraid when churches want to come and use their place because it will be converted to a church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All the cinema houses that they were doing fellowship, that the team was doing fellowship in Nigeria, they enter into bankruptcy. Amen. Amen. They close down. There was no cinema again. So if you have a cinema and then they say, please, can we be using the place where you are not showing? Hey! No, 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 please, go away. I will pay for anywhere you get. Amen. Amen. <laughs> because there is something that, you see, once it happens in the spirit realm, it will manifest in the physical. Amen. 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 And that is what you want to make to happen. You see, God, you see, there are, I've met people, they will just come, talk to me, dump money in our account, and go away for two years. I mean, I've met different, from different parts of the people have not seen me before, people have seen me before, black, white, orange, black. That can be God. It cannot be me. What marketing can I do? Ah, you don't understand. When I was not doing marketing, God was blessing me. When I was doing marketing, it was making no difference. You are going to pray. Money. I know you have ears to hear. But in case you don't have ears, I command you to have ears now. You hear the word of the Lord. Locate my life. In the name of Jesus. Say that to money. In Jesus, we pray. There was a prayer we prayed in the morning, and the Spirit of God is laying it on my heart again. I remember when I was preparing to come for this meeting some two, three weeks ago or thereabout. The Spirit of the Lord dropped it on my spirit. I'm going to pray. I refuse to be a 21st century slave in this land. Okay, you don't understand. I have read history of people that are not born from here. They made terrible wealth. Go and Google it. People that have made, that have made millions in America that are not American. Go and Google it. They put their list. Some came in five years. Some came in two years. There was a woman that came in three years. She was sleeping on the road. She started working in a restaurant. After yes, five yes, years, yes, she yes. bought the restaurant. Yes, yes, yes. NBC yes. night you carry this. Uh -huh. And I am coming to church. And I cannot provoke that. I refuse to be a 21st century slave. In the name of Jesus! Kaba Supalia! In this land, I refuse to be a 21st century slave. In the name of Jesus! The fathers of the earth, the abundance of this land, will locate me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Do, do you agree that there is fatness in this land? Do, do, do you know that this land is fat, huh? Oh, you, you, it's like you are saying the answer as if, so it's meant for some people and it's not meant for you. 
because you are not from this. Look, look, the Bible says the benefit of the whole earth is for everyone. Genesis 26, verse 13. Do you know what happened to Isaac? We read it in the morning. I read verse 29. Okay, verse 28. And he said, they said, we saw, saw certainly. Okay, let me start from verse 26. Man. Then, Abimelech went to him. Okay, 27. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing that ye ate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, we saw certainly that the Lord is with thee. And we said, let us there be an oath between us. They want to do business with him by force. Amen? Amen. Why? Because the Lord's presence is upon... Okay, let me look at Genesis 26 verse 13. And the man was great and went further. That's what his father's man do. Yes, 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 yes. yes. What, what, what did the Bible say? And the man was great. Was great. Great. Is great not enough? Okay, the Bible says he went further. And the Bible says he grew. On, you see, look, the Bible, it was not when they said went forth, grew until it became very great. Now, they did not put it here because they were looking for ah, what else can we put in the Bible so that it can be big. Ah, it's too small now. See the Bible, it's too small. Look, what can we put to? Look, let's, let's add something to the story of them. No. It was because that was what actually happened. It was inspired by the Holy Ghost. He said he was great. And he went great. Until he became very great. And the Philistines, we need to take... You see, look, when you gather 30 million, just like I illustrated in the morning, oh, the president will take notice of you. Amen. Amen. When they want to do the next election, they will invite you to White House. Amen? Amen. I mean, they don't just invite any of somebody. Amen. They invite people that they say, okay, they say, okay, please come and, come and just say opening prayer for us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What is an opening prayer that they cannot say? <laughs> when you have results, there will be no insults. Yeah. Oh, no. Amen? Yeah. You're not afraid! In this land, I receive the anointing to succeed. I receive the anointing to prosper. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you, the Lord of America. Open unto me. In the name of Jesus, open unto me. In the name of Jesus, open unto me. In the name of Jesus. Okay, some people don't want to pray that prayer, but we will pray that prayer two more times, and I will drop the mic. But you must pray the prayer, because if you don't pray the prayer, we will keep praying it until you pray it. Amen. One of the characteristics of coming here is that when you come here, you will go out on the same. Amen. When you come in in a particular way, you will go out a better person. Amen. And so, you are meant to pray the prayer. You see, when we go to work, we walk. When we are driving, we do what? We drive. When we come to church, we pray. And when we are praying, we pray. Amen. Amen. When we are praying, we don't cancel it. Father, Lord, actually, <laughs> if not that pastor tell us to pray. You see, um, you see one sound that, you know, I speak a lot of American language. Um, I don't understand the stress we're talking about. I want you to pray. I want you to look for somebody you have not heard today. You will pray for that person. This land of America. Bring the fatness inside you. I am holding. Now, you will ask for the name of that person. Bring the fatness and the blessings inside you. For so many a kids there. Kaya Pusaka. Kaya Pusaka. Kaya Pusaka. Stand up, bro. 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 Bring up, bring up. Sakaraba Sekeliya. Mandelos. Lihayaba. Fatness of this one. Look at me, 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 look at me
God said that there is someone here. You got something released to you and suddenly they withdrew it back. I hear from heaven. As you leave this meeting, by the authority of God that is in heaven, there shall be a restoration. There are people here. You have observed that every time, and it is every time, you have a promise of good things coming, or promise of a positive appointment. Couple of days or a day before that day, you will always have a particular dream. And once you have that dream, the thing you want to go will no longer work. Heaven said to me to decree that there are satanic timers that are always timing the points when things are supposed to work for you. But I have come as the messenger of the goodness, my goodness, my goodness. As can I see a hand of God about to penetrate this assembly right now. My goodness, never have back as open. But who's getting the endless as well hand here? By the authority in the word of God, as I hear a decree, whatever has been timing the days of performances of good things in your life, and are always attacking it from coming to pass, as your heaven is not as level than 21 persons here, I declare their days is over. It is over. It is over. It is over. It is over. I decree. That seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Don't let yourself attack. But they that seek the Lord shall not lack. Shall not lack. So lack must be a thing of the past in your life. Any good thing. Any. Everyone believing God for children here. Everyone believing God for a good job. Everyone believing God for a good marriage. Everyone believing God for a good promotion. Whatever is in the realm and the order of good that has failed to come your way, that you are in lack of, that you lack. If you say this member that several persons here today, I decree the backbone of lack be broken over your soul. No more lack. No more lack. Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout a big amen. amen. Celebrate us with your clap of honor. Be seated, be seated, be seated. That is just the first dose. Now, by the grace of God, don't initiate. God won't pass the gift to be his own. We are at Glory is not complete until there is wealth. If you are glory in poverty, it's shame. So that's why God will have his son to come deliver the message. And I can be a witness. Everything is said. Please don't be intimidated because I know there is a strong good in this land. When the mention of money is here, eh? $100,000. Wait, is this still is this in? <laughs> okay, we are going to come back and teach us how we are making this money. I know bank executive pays you million of money to hear you speak. But you are not going to have your account, don't worry. We are going to pray it out. But one of the things about this man is that he has a passion to help people make money. Just Google Sony and the King Just Google his name. The result is not an age. I mean, it looks simple, but it's dangerously. God has given him, just as God gave Solomon wisdom, and everything he touched was just for him. That's what God has expected him. He has about seven estates in Nigeria, mm. apart from every other thing he does. Now, I just came to this country. Why I want him to come back is because God said to me, God himself told me, that if we remove financial issue from my people's problem, mm. prayer will reduce. Yes, sir. Financial issue yeah. from my people's problem. 
Some people will not even miss it because the way they are working to make money and have that with their back. Not everybody may be able to see opportunities in the land, but there are some people that are equally open. This is one of them. It's an apostle of financial intelligence. He has, God has given him privilege to raise people from dungeon to step into places. God gave him spiritual ability in the area of real estate. Even as he has come on this ground, this land, he has only spent like four months in this land of America. I have bought how many properties now? Like five. Like five properties. Not credit to pay down. Not credit. He has estates in Nigeria. In America, some of us have not been able to buy one. He, I mean, as in, he was paying them. They don't want to sell himself. I don't want to pay them. It's, it's like it's flowing like so. So he has shared with us an impartation of the spiritual side of it. Those are the things he does. He calls, those are the, the way he was praying. But there are some things that are the principle of it. There are some ideas that are flowing through. As he has come here today, he has loaded some. Don't worry. You see, what you have commanded will be the least. By the time, I, because when God builds up, you will appear in his glory. No. You don't worry. <laughs> There are people here. Don't, he, he, he doesn't really like to share his story, but he needed to share so that you understand that this is what God has done through him. He's not blowing trumpet. He is more than all those trumpets. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. So I need to let you understand so that don't be intimidated. Money is only. I mean, how do I put it? It's a tool. Thank you, sir. It's not the end. All that God has helped him to do is to show the church that it is possible. And that is the passion is going on. It's their financial evangelism is going around all the world to do. To let us understand that we have better opportunities as Christians to command something. There are certain things we just need. God will help me. I will bring him before he goes back to Nigeria. To come and teach. How many of you will come? Don't, I won't bring him if you are not going. He will help your businesses. He will help your finances. God is, has given a privilege to know what you can do in this land. I, I, know, I know that what I'm saying here will put me in trouble. Because uh, there are some charges for it, but I uh, will uh, pray now. Amen. So begin to pray that God will put in his heart that you He's never like that anyway. He does his own things for God. He does his own things for God. But you must understand that, that those are things that people are paying to hear him. Mm. You don't just hear him. They pay to hear him. We are privileged to have him around us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We have a particular of what we can try one in Nigeria. Those are the people that broke through the stock exchange of Nigeria. When you get to Nigeria stock exchange, you just mention something and they will tell you, don't go to that boy. That guy can destroy this package. He <laughs> commands results in stock exchange. Like, he, he, when he drinks, he will know the stock that will go up. <laughs> God was just helping him. And there are still people God is about to raise in this generation. Amen. And your labor in this land will not go in there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We command results in this land. So shall it be. So he has, he God has used him to let us understand certain areas in the area of financial glorification. And after I leave this place, we share the testimony with you. God is going to be using Pastor Jeff just for like 20 minutes to impact upon us the spiritual dimension of glorification. Glory is all about the presence of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the provisions of God. That is all glory means. That's what glory means. I won't be able to share all this today, but by the grace of God, tomorrow on the praying radio, I will be teaching life on certain things that happens to glory. God showed me six things that can happen to glory. Let me just share one with you. Glory can be seen. Glory can be seen. And when glory, when glory is seen, two things can happen. It is either celebrated or it is critically attacked. The, the wise man said, For we have seen a star. And glory is talking about star. John himself said in John chapter 1, The world became, and we can see his glory. And he now said, As the only begotten. So there are dimensions of John said, We saw it, we can see his glory. But his own glory is different. It's as the only begotten of the Lord. So glory can be seen. There are people with eyes that can see glory. Now, when, we, they, when they see glory, they either celebrate it like the wise men went, 
and they offer from their treasure to celebrate. Or it could be critically attacked. When Aaron, Aaron did not see you, it was dead. He said, go and bring me wolves, that I may also go and worship is a lie. When they did not come back to him, what did he do? He terminated everyone that is two years and below. God visited you and said, take that boy away because they want to kill the glory that he has. So glory can be saved. Glory can be turned to shame. Oh my goodness. Psalm chapter 4. Oh ye son of man, why have you turned my glory to shame? So glory can be turned to shame. Glory can be taken away. And she named him Ichab. For now glory has left his time. Are you with me? Now all these things that happen to glory, some of us are in that category. Some people's glory have been seen from afar. And because glory can be exchanged, they exchange glory for shame. Some has been exchanged for shame. But I hope the news for you. Glory can be restored. Amen. Glory can also move from realm to realm. So it is not over. Even if you find yourself in a realm. Somebody shared a story with me. And those are some of the indications of glory exchanges. That there are two brothers, I mean two brothers in a single family. And the first, the, the younger one was doing great, I mean, the, the, the younger one was doing great than the first one. And the mother had to go and do spiritual investigation to see that the younger cannot be more prosperous than the brother. And suddenly one of the things that she realized was that what she was doing, what he was doing before, that he was commanding result, he no longer could not command result. His brother began to do it. And he began to command the same thing. And he was going down. As he was going down, the brother was going down. Don't say these things don't happen. I tell you things happen. Are you understanding me? So, one of the things I want you to understand is that God has brought us here just to invest his glory upon us. Because when the glory of God is risen upon you, no matter the darkness that covers the world, and the darkness that covers the people, which is called cross darkness. They said the only thing that will be shining around you is the glory of the Lord. Even kings will come to the brightness of your shining. Someone is here, that will be your testimony. But to live a life without glory is anti covenant. Why? Because he has crowned us what is man and the son of man, that you have crowned him with glory and honor. But Job now told me in Job 19, verse 9. He said, I have been stripped of my glory and my crown is taken away. So they can strip people out of their glory. But when God restored him, all the glory came back. There is glory restoration for you. Your business has been doing well before, there is going to be a restoration of glory. You know you used to lead before, but suddenly now even to read becomes a problem. Something has been tampered with. There is a need for a restoration. Amen. By the grace of God, I will be teaching for one hour on the radio, on the plane radio tomorrow on this issue of glory. But like I said, this is just what God has brought us here to do. Some of us, the way we pray today, we have never prayed like that before. Something has dropped into you. Because when people carry something, what is in them drops. You saw him praying like a mad prophet indeed. <laughs> something was dropping. By the grace of God, as you leave this place, the last quarter of this year, Everything this year owes you that has not come to you, they will be permitted to you. In the precious name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now it's time for us to just share testimony. Just if you have testimony, just you know, just share a testimony very briefly. Immediately after the testimony, um, Pastor Jeff will come, release another dimension of impartation. Don't be afraid. You will be full today. You are living here by night. And as you go, the Lord be with you. And after his impartation, we we'll just do an anointing, as God has spoken in the morning, that an, our angel, the two of them will just do it for us. Because he is from Kingdom Light Church. And when you see light, you see glory. But the light shines so much in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend. Uh-huh. A right sign, your light has come. This is the light he has come. And the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. So, <laughs> God knows how to bring He didn't tell me he's coming, but God brought him. He, he carried the light here. And the light is going to shine in your life. And this smile is also very simple but dangerous. <laughs> so don't do <laughs> Even when you see him, you see him like it. He's just shining. So that is glory. And he just collected some dangerous impartation from uh, Winner's Convention. He's a bona fide son of Babadea or Baba Oyedeko. Bona fide son. <laughs> so the day is just fresh. 
Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's time to uh, testify of the goodness of God in our life. What God has done this quarter that is coming to an end. So, you see, Pastor has been praying and he has been testifying all along. With confidence. It's not about what, um, you know, ah, how is that true? That's your own problem. You know, it's true. Because God has done it for him. Yes, 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 yes. God has done it for him. So what has God done for you that you want to share? It's a testimony that you are here today. It's a testimony that we all are here today. But testify of what God has done this past quarter. Something special God has done in your life. This quarter that is coming to our end. Anyone here today? Anyone? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First of all, I want to thank God for saying changes in the church. I've not been there for like six, eight months or thereabouts. Coming in today and seeing this shows that God is really working. And I thank God for that. And I remember that I've had two car crashes this year. In the space of four months, I think one in March, the day after. 30 years of losing my dad, and the second one was July 22nd. So I had two car crashes in four months. I thank God for life. I thank God I'm still bouncing. Amen. Amen. I'm going to find some of I'm still with him yesterday. So I thank God. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone? Praise the Lord. Uh, mine is uh, a case, a little like his. Uh, I usually drive a lot and I, do, I sleep uh, on the same way. It's uh, frequent <coughs> that I think that the Lord always keeps me and possesses me. Uh, it must be the miracle of God that I'm standing before you today. So I just want the assembly to know that. That um, I thank the Lord for his goodness, for keeping me alive, even when I drive badly. It's driving badly that you sleep on the wheels. So I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Can we all rise, please? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I just love to praise Him. Because what God has done for me, nobody in this world can do it. Then when you when you you just really know sure from your heart that God did something for you, you will not be ashamed to stand up and testify. And, let, and give God the glory. He said, you will be ashamed of me. I will be ashamed of you. That's why I, I will not be ashamed of God. I appreciate him. How he's taking care of me. The thing the doctor cannot do. He's done it for me. The thing the man cannot do. He's done it for me. He makes me shine. When the enemy said, I have got you in my head, in his head. Or got me in, in the grave. But God make me shine. And even more better than ever before. That's why it's so important for the body of Christ to rise up and become in giving God the glory. Whatever He done for you, He will always increase it because you are not ashamed of Him. Don't be ashamed of God. Women of God, men of God, the children of God, don't be ashamed of God. Give Him all the glory and watch God to come and move in your behalf, in your problem, in your home, in your children, husband, wife. He will move for you. He is moving for me. And no man is all. He's able to take anything God has done for me back from me because I thank God with Jesus. I thank God with Jesus. Amen, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to say this to glorify the name of God. I 
came from a royal family. We are so many that we don't even know how many we have. That's the truth. I'm from the royal family of Atobatele of Ilorong. We are so many, we don't know how many we have. That's the truth. But to the glory of God, there's one thing that I don't know of as many as we have. The Lord gave me the grace to produce the first lawyer in the family. In the time of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. She really moved me. <laughs> when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me. Great thing. Great thing that nobody has ever done. You need to stop that car. 
before we know it, the Lord stopped the car. She couldn't even get out of the driver's side. The car was damaged. It was bad. She was able to get out on the other side. The car, even the passenger side was already damaged. She had to push just to get out. And it's been a year now. It was September 21st. This is September. We are still living. We are complete. Five girls. I just can't thank you, the Lord. I just can't thank you, the Lord. I can't I can, I can keep it to myself. I, I, I love Jesus. I can't help him. I just love him. He's the best sweet I've ever heard. Like, he's the father. The father of all fathers. The mother of all mothers. And my family just can't live a day. Not a second without him. And that's why I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. shining in your life in the precious name of Jesus. Please join me as I hand over the microphone to my wonderful brother, Pastor Jeff Dan. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Glory is a cure for shame. The cure of shame is glory. The glory of God is the cure for shame. The first time the word glory appeared in the Bible, it was connected to wealth. The children of Laban, they said, it is of our glory that he has gotten this wealth. It is, it is the glory of our father. He said, it, the word glory, the first time it appeared in the Bible was connected to wealth. So glory is not just shaking and praying in the Holy Ghost. Glory is wealth. If you understand Bible, uh, the word of God is a progressive revelation. And whatever it appeared in Genesis is supposed to carry the same connotation all through scripture. In Genesis 31, it says it is wealth. Glory is wealth. But tonight, the dimension I want you to see is the dimension of the glory being all the goodness of God. Genesis 31 and verse 1, you will see that scripture there. Genesis 31 verse 1, you will see it. That was the first time the word glory ever appeared in the Bible. And it was connected to wealth. So, man of God, I agree with you in total. Amen? <laughs> glory that has no wealth is shame. Hallelujah. Glory that has no wealth in it is not true glory. God is a God of progressive revelation. Whatever you see in Genesis, it ought to be the same way and more of it because God is progressive. If it was wealth, then we go to Exodus. The Bible now tells us something about glory. Go to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33, Exodus 33, and beginning from verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou said unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. And I can consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Hallelujah. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. I say his presence will go with you and by reason of your presence you will find rest. Hallelujah. You're entering into the last quarter of the year and I prophesy over you that this last quarter shall be the quarter of rest in the name of Jesus Christ. For I hear in the word of God it says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. God declare in his word the vision is for an appointed time. Though it tarries, wait for it. He says, it will not tarry. He says, though it tarries, wait for it. It will surely come to pass. He says something, but at the end, it will speak, not at the beginning. Some of you, your glory did not speak at the beginning. It has not spoken in the middle of the year, but at this last quarter, by the prophetic utterance that is coming to you now, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, the glory that is coming upon you will wipe away every shame you experience in the first and second quarter of this year. If that is you, shout amen. amen. The glory. It says it will speak at the end. My presence will give you rest. Verse 15, and he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated. The glory of God is what separates you from other people. The glory is what brings separation. It separates you from your peers. It separates you from the people you walk in the same place. You might be receiving the same amount of the same paycheck at the end of the day. 
I tell people all the time, if any man can explain how you are living based on your paycheck, you have not tapped into the glory of God yet. If they can explain why you are driving what you are driving, if they can explain why you live where you live, it is your job that is releasing that glory. We thank God for that, but that is just a small level of it. Amen? Amen. They ought to see your colleague, ought to see you and wonder, are you, do you have another job somewhere? Uh, what is going on in your life? That is the glory of God manifesting in your life. Hallelujah. No man should explain. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of the Spirit is like the wind. If they can comprehend you, that's why tonight, after this service, that devil that used to comprehend you, the light of God that is coming from this altar tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, the season of the enemy being able to comprehend you is over in the name of Jesus Christ. Before you make a move, the devil figure you out. But the Bible says that light, it shines in darkness. And that life will make the devil not to be able to comprehend you. Yeah. You see, when the enemy can comprehend you, before you make one move, the enemy has gone 10 steps ahead of you and blocked all the ways. But by reason of the glory of God coming upon you, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ. That devil, that enemy that has always figured out how to confuse and confuse your marriage, confuse your family, confuse your children, that devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, light has come, darkness has to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at this carefully. He says here in verse, uh, so shall we be separated and our people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now this is God's definition of glory. Ah. It's one thing for you to define something. It's another thing for God, who is the God of glory, or the Father of all glory, to give us his own definition. Yes. Let's see the definition that God gives for the word glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness. All my goodness. So, glory is all of God's goodness. Glory is what? All of God's goodness. All of God. If it is good, it is glory. <laughs> if it is good, it is glory. You are going to pray tonight before we anoint you. This is what you pray, Lord. Show me all your goodness. All, of it, all, of it. all, all your goodness. Let the goodness of God show you my business. Let it show you my children's love. Let it show you my business. Lord, show me all your glory. Show me all your goodness. Lift up your voice. Mexoto katika katika la bredosa pata. Likredo, your goodness. All of your goodness. All of your goodness. Lord, show me all of your goodness. Show me all of your goodness. Show me all of your goodness. Let open jay. Let open you the bredes kapara. Ke pero ke para ke dogos ke le bredi kapara. Re bredos ke bredos ke bredes ke lo bredi kapara. All of your goodness. All of your goodness. All of your goodness. Show me all of your goodness. In this last corner. Show me all your goodness. Show me how good you are. Show me how good you are. Show me how awesome you are. Show me how good you are. Separate me from evil. Separate me from poverty. Separate me from shame. Separate me from stagnation. Separate me from delay. Show me all your goodness, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you begin to come forth for the anointing, this is what I need you to understand. At the end of this scripture, this is what God said to Moses. He says, in order for you to see my glory, I have to hide you in the cleft of the rock. You can't see my glory if you are not inside the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. He says, if, if you have to see that glory, it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So as you come, Father, hide me in the rock. 
Hide me in the rock. Hallelujah. Hide me in the rock that I may see your glory. He said, if you're not in the rock, you can't see the glory. glory. Hallelujah. Can you pray? Don't come casually. Come. Everybody was coming to John the Baptist for baptism. But Jesus Christ didn't come casually. As he was coming, he was praying. And because he was praying, the Holy Ghost came upon him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't come casually. Hallelujah. Man of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ha ha. Okay. Yes, glory be to God. Come, Elo Brodo Shi, the Gredo Copasia, Ribredo Copasina, Glede Gobo Sata, Malabo, Shade Gadigala, Le Gredo Coso, glory. Let the glory, this all will not dry. This glory, this glory will not cease. This all will not dry over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Massa Pecoto, Shile Bredo, Ribregede Castilla Bata, glory. Let this glory abide upon you.
Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's our friend time in the house. Hallelujah. Begin to package your offering. Begin to package your offering. Thank you, sir. Begin to package your offering. I want you to understand. It is the principle of the kingdom. It is the principle of the kingdom. That we give. Any human being that does not operate by the principle of giving will die. Because if you just keep taking in oxygen without releasing it, you can live. Do you understand that? It's a principle that God has put in us. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you end this week. If you realize, if you decided that what I ate was so sweet and so nice, I won't use the restroom. You will constipate and suffer something that is not right. Any lie that is not given begins to stink. If you are not given, you will stink in life. I guarantee you, this servant of God, everything he's sharing, he will never finish teaching the principle without showing you that what provokes it is given. And that given is not limited to tithe and offering. A lot of times believers think it's just tithe and offering. No. The poor you see around you. Jesus can make a very dangerous statement. He said the poor is always with you. In other words, there are certain opportunities with always uh, the opportunity to prosper will always be there. Because he that give it to the poor, lend it to God. He said the poor will always be there. Tell your neighbor, I will be among the poor. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. I will refuse to be among the poor. Hallelujah. I refuse to be among the poor. He said the poor will always be there, but he didn't put your name there. But he says the poor will always be there. Lift up your offering before God tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that which we plant has to die first. He says the glory he comes out with is different. Jesus Christ wanted to expand ministry. The Greek came to Jesus. And they said, we want to see Jesus. And he said, no. Right now, I can't extend beyond the Jewish people that I was sent to. But the time will come when the gospel will reach them. He says, the only way it will happen it says, except a corn of wheat falls down and die, it abided by itself. But when it dies, then it will bring forth much fruit. It says, until I die, the gospel can go to the Gentiles. Amen. Your seed has to die for you to enlarge to another dimension of wealth. This offering you are given will be the offering that will break that back of poverty and cause you the man of God pray the prayer I love that prayer. Everything, every error that my parents have operated in, let this offering stop me from making such errors. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give to the glory of your name. May this offering provoke Another dimension of glory in our life. Amen. For yes, there is the glory of the moon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There is the glory of the star. There's the glory of the sun. And there's the glory of the star. And even the glory of the star different from one another. Lord, shift my dimension of glory Amen. to another realm by this offering. In Jesus' name, you may give your offering. Hallelujah. Worship team. Hallelujah. Are they coming to the front? Yeah, dance to the front and drop your offering. Can I get an ammo? Let's just come forward and just drop the offering.
as we celebrate Jesus, it is well with you in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. All right, let us now move on. 